Today's video is sponsored by LD Player. However, unfortunately, we will not be seeing much of LD Player today because we're going to be talking about PvP. And so guys, what I have here is a document by Call Silk How Su Cause W. I'm so sorry for butchering your name, but shout out to old mate for this document because it is exceptionally helpful. However, I kind of want to go through this document in kind of my own structure because especially if you have played games like this before, so I'm saying like Princess Connect, there are a lot of questions that can be answered very, very early on and I just think that like the way that I want to talk through this is a little bit different. Alright and so with that being said, Hi, welcome back to another Blue Archive video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be going through the comprehensive vent Wait a second. I would have thought that it's like the comprehensivist. Anyway, comprehensivist guide to Blue Archives PvP. And so again, another shout out to the author Cause W hashtag 5130. But essentially in this video, I want to talk through a whole bunch of the different topics in here because it's a really well-written document. I just think that personally, I do have some things to add to it. And so I will be jumping all over the place because I think that's what makes sense for me. And so without further ado, let's just jump into the content. And so I want to start off with the introduction don't look at the freaking tier lists. Even old mate who wrote this document is kind of like, don't look at the tier lists. Like, look at that. Do not take these tier lists out of context. We look at them later. Okay, let's just start with an introduction to PvP. So PvP is very, very simple. For the majority of you guys who do watch my Princess Connect videos, PvP is going to be like second nature to you. It is almost identical to Princess Connect's PvP. And so for you guys who don't play Princess Connect, let's get started. So essentially, every player has two teams. For example, I am a player and I have a defending team as well as an attacking team. So essentially I hold a rank, right? So for example, I am rank 184. At rank 184, I set a defense team and so anyone who wants to attack me, they have to beat my defense. And then on the flip side of things, if I want to get a higher rank, so for example, if I was 185 and I wanted to climb to 175, then I would have to take my attack team and attack their defense team. And so if the attacker wins against the defending team, then the attacker and defender swaps ranks. So every day we get five free attempts to go ahead and attack somebody. And you can most certainly get more attempts if you so wish. And so I think a key thing to point out over here is as a defender, so say I'm trying to hold my rank 185, there there is absolutely no limit to the amount of times I can be attacked. For example, 195 might look at me and be like, well, I'm going to attack you. They're going to kill me and then I'm going to go to 195. And then somebody at 218 are going to find me at 195. And then they're going to be like, well, I'm going to attack this guy because this guy's easy. And then so forth, right? And so that's pretty standard. I think a lot of other games do have this as well, like counter side as well as pre-con. But here is where it kind of differs a little bit from pre-con. So there are no replays of battles to help you adjust your defending strategy. And so what that means is that unfortunately, we can't watch watch what exactly went down. And because we can't watch what went down, you kind of just need to infer what would have happened with like the interactions between an attacking and defending team. And so for the match itself, it is completely autoplay AI. And so in this regard, it is very similar to Precon. It is essentially team building versus team building. However, the win conditions are actually a little bit different for this one. He says here that a battle is over after one team's strikers have all been eliminated or the timer runs out. And so when the timer runs out, the team with the most remaining HP wins. And so this one is going to be a little bit harder to adjust for the pre-con players because traditionally for this kind of like gameplay, you really like to run stall teams, right? And that is not to say that stall teams won't work here. The only issue is that stall teams do no damage, right? And so if they're doing no damage to a team that's like quite well balanced and say that team has like two snipers just like constantly chunking away at the tanks, then the stall team is going to take more damage overall and just lose. However, let's see what kind of meta is going to be formed on global. I think it's going to be pretty spicy. And so with that, hopefully you guys have a pretty good grasp of PvP itself. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is actually the PvP bracket, uh, this one over here. And so PvP brackets in Blue Archive are almost identical to the ones in Precon. Essentially, a bracket system just means when your account was created, you will be placed into like a pool of, let's say, 1,500 players. And then for the next two months or so, you will only be fighting these 1,500 players. And so this is a little bit different from Precon. And guys, I'm really sorry for making all of these like Precon uh, analogies. It's just because a lot of my base audience is from Precon, so please bear with me. Anyway, so back to it. For Princeton, as connect, we got assigned a bracket when we unlocked PvP. In Blue Archive, however, we are assigned a bracket based on the account creation date. And so what that means is that 
And I know that a lot of you are going to try this, but it means that we cannot store our PVP unlock to hope for a better bracket. And by better bracket, I mean like a later bracket. And so to really sum up what I'm saying, because it can be getting a little bit confusing, being able to stall a bracket is the difference between playing against like launch players or fighting people that are starting later. Generally speaking from experience, the launch players are like the really hardcore ones, the day one players. And so you will probably be having a harder time, especially maintaining your ranks. And so that is the rationale, although unfortunately we cannot pull that off in Blue Archive here. However, what this means is that if you are okay with missing a few days, you could technically store your account creation. Some people might find this worth it, some people won't. I'm personally in the bucket of, I, it's not really worth it guys. And so yeah, almost done with the brackets, except for the fact that they also do reset between seasons. So essentially, for example, like bracket one and bracket two, both of these brackets initially had 1500 players. However, about half of them in both of the brackets kind of went inactive. And so when the season resets, essentially they're taking up all of the active players and shuffling them together. However, I am pretty sure that there are a few more factors in terms of like where you get shuffled to, but that's probably all hearsay and just rumors. So just, just know that when a season ends, you're going to get shuffled up. And so guys, let's take a quick break to talk about our sponsor, LD Player. LD Player is a great modern emulator that will suit all of your mobile gaming needs. It's got a bunch of great features such as multi-instancing, sync operations, and a high frame rate mode. High frame rate meaning 120 FPS, which I haven't actually tried for Blue Archive. And so guys, as you can see, Blue Archive is running flawlessly on this bad boy. And after I am finally out of reroll hell, I will continue playing on it. I personally feel like I'm getting better frame rates on LD Player than some of its competitors, but that may be my bias. And so if you would like to try out LD Player, head on down to the description or the pinned comment and click on the link. Thanks again to LD Player for the sponsorship. And with that, let's get back to the video. So that's it for the bracket. Let's talk about why you should do PVP. In a nutshell, PVP in BA gives you three forms of currencies. It gives you credits, which is your like basic money, your pyrocines, which are the gemmies, the premium currency, and then coins in which you can purchase things with. And so technically speaking, there are three types of rewards. Every time you attack, depending on if you win or not, you may be rewarded with some credits or some coins. And honestly, I can already see a little bit of coin feeding here. After that, we have the Minutely rewards. And so again, this is very similar to the Precon Arena and PA coins. Essentially, the longer that you're able to hold a PvP rank, the more credits you are going to be able to make per minute. However, guys, the real fat juicer is this boy over here, the daily. So essentially, there is a cutoff time. And typically, speaking, this cutoff time is at a different time to the daily reset. What happens is that as this time ticks over, the rank that you are at at that particular moment will dictate the amount of rewards or the kind of rewards that you will receive. And so if I scroll down a little bit and show you guys this table over here, if for example, I was rank 89 and the cutoff time was 9 a.m. for me. If at 9 a.m. I was still at rank 89, I will get these rewards over here, 30 of the gemmies and 100 of the coins. However, if somebody at 8.59 hits me from 89 down to like 101 and then we go from 859 to 9 and so therefore at 9 I am rank 101. I will unfortunately only get the rewards for rank 101 uh, so that's probably going to be something like 25 crystals. And so what I described just then is known as sniping. Well in Princess Connect we call it sniping and if you blue archive players already have like a name for that then uh, let me know in the comments please. But essentially you are trying to wait until the very last moment to slip into the next cohort and so yeah this is a pretty nice income for like your coins as well as your jemmies. However, again, for you pre-con players, it is actually not as crazy or as lucrative as Princess Connect. Because in pre-con, if you can hit the high ranks, you'd be getting like two rolls a day. But in Blue Archive, as you can see, rank one, 45 jemmies, it costs 120 for one roll. So you're actually only getting one third of a roll every single day. And so where I'm really trying to get at this is don't be too upset if you can't hit these ranks. Because the income like comparatively is like not that great. All right, and so let's move on to the season highest placement and overall highest placement. Essentially in pre-con and what I think is a little bit more intuitive, these are your first time rewards. So from your starting rank, from the very, very bottom, all the way up to rank one, there are jemmies to be made every time you hit a new milestone. And so this is kind of split into two different buckets. You've got your season highest placement as well as your overall highest placement. And so TLD, are every single season you should climb up to rank one to be able to get the season highest placement and the first time that you hit overall highest placement rank one 
that's that's it. And so really, if you want me to distill this into something that's more digestible, if a season has reset, you need to go hit rank one again. If a season is about to reset, you need to make sure that you've hit rank one before that reset time. And the last piece of advice here is you need to climb as fast as you can, especially when you first start playing PvP and hopefully it's a fresh bracket. There are going to be a lot of bots and bots are way easier to kill than people. And so what that means is that you can climb and climb and climb and hit rank one with relative ease. As more people fill up the bracket, it's going to get harder and harder. However, I am sure that there are going to be some nice people who will help you achieve the rank one. They typically do this by dropping their defense down so that you can just like one hit them. All right, so I've spent so much time talking about like the different mechanics surrounding PvP, but not like about the PvP itself. And so before we have a look at this tier list, I do want to show you guys uh, this one over here. Positioning and AI behavior. This is probably the most important part in this document. However, it would take way too long to try to explain this in this video. In a nutshell, just know that where you position your characters, like one, two, three, four, this actually dictates their starting positions when they enter the battle. And so as you can tell, it's going to get like super, super dank. There's a lot of like theory crafting, a lot of team building, a lot of positionals. Like you see this Shun over here, as well as the Harana, they are on one and three. And you can see that they are in the back line. They are behind some like barricades and they are just sniping from afar. But really guys, give this one a good read. Maybe I'll come back and revisit it another day. Because in my opinion, like this is where you start really, really learning about PvP. If you really want to be competitive and be able to like dismantle other people's compositions, then this is 100% where you start. Anyway, moving on from that, let's go down to the common picks and examples. So in a nutshell, every season is going to have a particular terrain. For JP, the first season featured urban and so you can already imagine a lot of the urban characters are going to be the ones that are in meta. And so that is where the tier list starts, right? I'd be pretty surprised to see anybody in here that isn't urban or at least like at worst neutral with urban. And so guys, the reason I keep talking about terrain is because of this. Depending on the character's mood, they get a damage multiplier, but not only that, they get a block rate behind cover. What this essentially means is that if this character had this uh, this smiley, this mood, and if they are behind cover, 60% of the time that they are being attacked, they will 100% negate. And so you can already see that not only is it affecting your damage dealt, but it's also affecting your tank's survivabilities. Well, everybody's survivability. But in a nutshell, if I scroll through all of this, you will see a lot of key recurring characters. Here is kind of like the meta team for the urban season. And so I want you guys to take note of these characters. We've got Shun over here. We've got Haruna over here. We've got Tsubaki, we've got Hibiki, and we've got the nurse one star. I cannot remember her name. And so with this, I would ask you guys to like really explore why they are in these positions and why they are here. For example, Haruna is a very, very strong attacker because she is blue. And generally speaking, blue is quite neutral. And so she is going to be nuking down a lot of different characters. On the other hand, you've got Tsubaki over here who is a pretty much the premier tank and the reason that she is a premier tank is because a she is blue which means that she is going to be neutral to a lot of like red and yellow attacks but also b her skill set is also just really freaking strong and so what i just noticed is that i'm actually talking about the outdoors you see shun is here and then shun is also up here in urban and then we've also got tsubaki over here and if i scroll down we've got tsubaki again and then on top of that what you also notice is that we have hoshino over here and then hoshino over here for outdoors and she was also featured in urban. What I'm trying to say here is that there is a pattern. There, there is certainly a pattern. There are very distinct characteristics as to why like certain characters are here and in the positions that they are in. However, what this means is that you can start predicting like the hidden comps, right? Because as you climb higher and higher in PvP, for example, at rank 89, you may only be able to see the enemy's defenses teams position one. And so if this is a meta team and like generally speaking, everybody is a meta slave, then you can kind of guess that like for example Tsubaki is going to be in position 2 and so how exactly do you deal with Tsubaki she is blue armor so therefore she gets hit hard by the blue attack and generally speaking the best blue attacker is Haruna so Haruna is going to be smashing into your Tsubaki like you guys can see I just went on like some random random tangent right but that really just goes to show like how in depth and like how theoretical that PvP can get in blue archive and so all of that all of that is leading me over to this one over here and so essentially all of these characteristics that I was talking about before he covers 
in here right now. So don't look at the tier list because every character has a counter. We saw how dominant Tsubaki is. If I scroll back up, like look at the pick rate. Tsubaki is in 94% of all attacks for the outdoor season. And then let's go back up here. She is also the most picked. And so what that means is that naturally her counter, Haruna, is also going to be one of the most picked characters. So guys, I implore you, if nothing else in this document, read through each of these descriptions and understand why exactly they are good. Because if you don't understand it and you just throw a whole bunch of stuff together, those teams are going to get dismantled really, really easily. And then when you go ahead and hit a team and it turns out to be a non-meta team, you just won't know how to dismantle it because you've just been copying a whole bunch of like meta team comps. And so with all of that being said, I think we can finally look at the tier lists. And so hopefully these two tier lists are not going to be of any surprise to you now. We know that Hoshino and Tsubaki are both fantastic tanks. We know that Shun is going to be exceptionally dominant because if you did read this one down here, her ability to instantly generate SP at the beginning of the battle is extremely strong. For you pre-con players, that's TP charging on a team level. And then we've got Harana over here as an answer to the Tsubaki. And then Hibiki over here because she is a very, very strong offense and thrives in urban but then you can see that both Hibiki and Haruna are demoted down a tier to, to A and to B and this is purely because of the terrain switching up and so guys I have been all over the place with this guide <laughs> Hopefully that made sense. And then so what you guys will notice is that indoors tier list, it is not out yet because I believe indoors has not been released. And so you can kind of infer what is about to happen, right? Hoshino and Shun have both been dominant because they are not majorly, majorly affected by the urban and outdoors. But maybe when indoors comes out, it's not going to be looking too hot for them. And then we've got Tsubaki over here, S in urban, S in outdoors. But if I pull up her profile, look at that. She is crying indoors. And so she may be good, it's hard to say, but chances are she's not going to be. And so with that, I think I've rambled on about PvP for long enough. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Let me know how you feel about PvP after this video. If you guys are JP vets, please correct me if I am wrong. I am not freaking perfect at all. Or if you do have any tips, please let us know. Otherwise, again, my secret question to you guys, is PvP overwhelming? Is it seemingly kind of fun? Do you guys like theory crafting and team building? And so if you guys could drop your thoughts down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if this video has helped you, please consider a like. And if you haven't subbed yet, then please sub. But as Miss Dominant Tank Tsubaki once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.